no one knows who invented the wheel but we know that the wheel is one of our most valuable inventions since the very first wheel was made humans have been trying to find new ways to improve the use of wheels one such discovery was adding teeth to the rim of the wheel a wheel with teeth is called a gear let's find out more about gears when two gears fit together one gear can turn the other without slipping this is called a gear train each gear train has two parts a driver gear the one that you turn and the follower gear the one that gets turned notice that when we turn the driver gear clockwise the follower gear turns anti clockwise similarly if we turn the driver gear anti clockwise the follower gear turns clockwise sometimes a third gear is placed between the two gears like this this intermediate gear is called an idler the idler forces the follower gear to rotate in the same direction as the driver gear have you seen the chain over the gear train of a bicycle the chain forces the follower gear to rotate in the same direction as the driver gear Let's look at two types of gear trains. In one kind of gear train, a larger gear turns a smaller gear. When we turn the larger gear, the smaller gear turns faster than the larger gear. We can check the number of rotations of each gear with a simple activity. Let's mark the radius of the gears with a black line. Now turn the driver gear once and count how many rotations the smaller gear makes. Did you count too? Rotating the large gear once causes the small gear to rotate twice. This means the small gear rotates twice as fast as the big gear. The driver gear has 20 teeth. How many teeth do you think the follower gear has? Remember that the follower gear rotates twice as fast as the driver gear. If your answer is 10, you are right. Gears can be used to speed things up, but in return for the speed, less force is produced. Consider this example. When you are cycling and want to travel faster, you switch to a lower gear to increase your speed. How does that happen? Changing gears increases the size of the driver gear. The larger the size of the driver gear, the faster you can cycle. However, you also find that it becomes increasingly harder to pedal because in such a gear train The larger the driver gear, the greater the force needed to turn it. When the driver gear is larger than the follower gear, the gear ratio of the gear train is low. The gear ratio is denoted as the number of teeth of the follower gear over the number of teeth of the driver gear. Now, can you calculate the gear ratio for the gears you just tracked? The gear ratio for this gear train is 10 over 20 which is equal to 1 over 2 or 0.5. The other kind of gear train uses a smaller gear to turn the larger gear. In this case, the follower gear turns slower. Let's mark the radius and turn the driver gear once to count how many rotations the big gear makes. The number of teeth in the driver gear is 8. How many teeth do you think the follower gear has? Sixteen. 
This means that for every rotation of the driver gear, the follower gear completes half a rotation. This kind of gear produces less speed but more force. Again, let's look at the cycling example. When you cycle uphill, you switch to a gear that is easier to pedal. It takes less effort to pedal uphill, but you also travel more slowly now. Why? Because you increase the size of the follower gear. In such a gear train, while less force is needed to turn the driver gear, we get a slower speed. When the driver gear is smaller than the follower gear, the gear ratio of the gear train is high. This means that the smaller gears move faster than the big gears. Time for an exercise! Here is a gear train with three gears. If the idler, B, moves anti-clockwise, in what direction will A and C move? Gears A and C will move in a clockwise direction because the idler helps the two gears move in the same direction. Let's summarize. A gear is a wheel with teeth on the rim. A gear is used to change the direction of rotation, transmit force and increase speed. A low gear ratio causes an increase in speed but lowers the force ratio. A high gear ratio causes a decrease in speed with an increase in the force ratio.